Well, it's Sunday, March 26th, 6.30. You can see the sun is still up. We are rapidly progressing towards summer. I've spent the last couple of days doing some calculations and coming up with some equations and charts so that I can begin to determine, uh, quickly determine the size of galaxies based on their distance and the, the diameters of the galaxies based on distance and apparent size and then converting over to expected magnitude. But what I'm doing right now is, I want you to see we're about five days post new moon, as you can see in the camera as I zoom in. Sirius, although Sirius will be out tonight, probably well past culmination. I want to show you the moon. I just did an alignment. Actually, I just put in the corrected time for the scope. That's all I've done. And there you can see the alignment on the go-to is very good. And apparently the calculation on the moon for its position is actually quite good inside the Gemini 2 database as well. Given how rapidly it changes, I'm quite surprised. Anyway, the scope's oriented towards the west. We've got a fifth day. Moon post new moon. I'm hoping, because this may be my last venture for a while out, that I can capture the galaxies of Leo tonight. And as you can see, we got some clouds, so there's no guarantees. But it's promising because earlier today, the weather was quite overcast. We actually had snow this morning. So anyway, I'll be back probably around uh, 8.30 to 9. It's quite cold, but I've got to let Leo ascend quite a bit to get the best views. And of course, the moon to descend. So I'll also be providing information about the galaxies that you can't find in the database, which is basically its diameter and expected visual magnitude. Until then, carpe diem. Now the evening begins, like most do, with aligning the scope and synchronizing it to a star. This one is Regulus. It's about 45 degrees in ascendant in the sky, which means it's at a permissible angle now with most of its associated galaxies for some imaging, although it's not quite sky dark yet. But I begin by synchronizing and kudos. The mount tracks pretty well. We had a great outing last week with some beautiful galaxies. Um, some face-ons and edge-ons and Hydra and Leo Minor. Uh, Lyra, etc., etc. Anybody can find that uh, as the previous video to this one on Golden Phoenix Publish. So what we're going to do now, however, is we're going to try to squeeze in the Leo galaxies tonight. But first, I'll cover a few uh, what random ones that are probably more further to the west that are more closer to the ascendant right now. So there is Regulus, the first time I've done a synchronization of that particular first magnitude star. Alpha Leonis. Our first study for tonight is a galaxy, adventitious galaxy because I discovered that 3129, which I had on my list, was listed as a star. It's NGC 3130. It's a galaxy in Leo, magnitude 13.4, 1 by 0.6 arc minutes, 366,000 light years distant. And my sense of this one, it'll prove to be, when I do the calculations for its actual diameter, it'll prove to be something like our uh, M31, probably about 150 to 160 me, uh, th thousand light years in diameter. We're not getting a good view yet. You can see the galaxy in the center of the screen. The screen's very bright. I'll have to come back to it later. Uh, due to the fact that we have yet to achieve sky dark. I'm not sure why the screen's so bright. I have to double check on that. It does look pretty dark out there. I'll have to keep an eye on it. Maybe I made some kind of a settings change. It's complicating the image brightness. But that's our look at 3130. However, so many other stars are similar looking that it's a possibility we're not actually seeing the galaxy in the center of the field. We'll have to 
come back and check that out later. There's a second adventitious galaxy, NGC 3131 Galaxy in Leo, magnitude 13, a little larger, 2.4 by 7.7 .7 arc minutes, 232 million light years distant. This one's probably about the size or maybe a little larger than our own galaxy, which is about 90,000 uh, light years across. And it's pretty clear that we are seeing a galaxy in the middle of the screen. So maybe, in fact, we were seeing the last one. Note also that I did reduce the screen intensity on the display, probably down from 50% to something closer to 30. So maybe we'll go back to 30, 30 and see what it looks like as a result of the change which I made just five minutes ago. I mystified. I could not get back to that other galaxy. I'll have to check the reference on the screen in the actual video. This is NGC 3032, a galaxy in LEO, magnitude 12.5, 2.4 by 2.3 arc minutes, so it's a face-on. It's a galaxy of class S uh, spiral, uh, capital B, which usually means it's barred, zero, with a ring at 72 million light years distant. This one's pretty small, probably somewhere in the 25 to 50. I'll have to get the numbers up a light year size, but you can certainly make out the galaxy there between those two almost equally bright stars right at the middle of the screen. It does have rather an annular appearance, could easily be thought of as a planetary nebula, but no, that's a galaxy NGC 3032. Our next study, this is pre-planned on my observing list. Now that it's getting close to sky dark, NGC 3169, Galaxy in Six Tants, very bright, magnitude 10.2, fairly large, 4.2 by 2.9 arc minutes. This is a spiral uh, with an A. I have to look that up. It's only 56 million light years distant, so probably like in the 40,000 light years diameter size. You'll see the information on the screen when I post this up. As a video, you can see the galaxy just above the dark bar. Bright central core, kind of elongate, bleeding off to the 1130 and the 530 positions. Uh, the screen's still pretty bright. I'm using standard, uh, what I now call 18 inch settings, which is one, uh, 128 flood with uh, 42 auto gain control decibel sensitivity. I'm not liking what I'm seeing right now in terms of the stars. They seem to be uh, a bit bloated. Maybe it's just a bright region of space. But there's a galaxy and it gives you a sense of its extensions. NGC 3177 is a galaxy in Leo. It's magnitude 12.4, 1.5 by 1.2 arc minutes, 61 million light years distance, so it's probably a super dwarf, as I call them. It's a spiral of class BC, so it's got a relatively minor bar and core. Um, we'll have a look. See the galaxy just above the bar? A little mushy, a little elongate. Given its dimensions, 1.5 by 1.2 arc minutes, we might expect that. Picked up one of the ubiquitous satellites moving through the field. Actually, that one might not be a satellite. That could actually be a meteor because the tail is slowly diminishing. So. I was looking down at the time, but you may have just seen a meteor streaking through the screen. Here we are, NGC 3177. A bit of a diversion, NGC 3242 is a planetary nebula in Hydra. Deep south, magnitude 8.6, 40 by 25 arc seconds, so smaller than most galaxies, 3600 light years distant with a central star of magnitude 12.3. Planetary nebulas are not a good choice at these settings, and I'm not going to reset the scope, but I thought I would just go ahead and post it up anywhere here. I think the 
planetary is to the right of that very brightest star there because that brightest star is in the two arc minute size range, one to two, and the planetary is half of one. So there's our look. Here we have another adventitious galaxy, 3245 NGC, in Leo Minor, magnitude 10.8, fairly large, 3.5 by 2.4 arc minutes. It's a class O spiral, which means right at the branching point, 63 million light years distant. Not particularly large, probably in the super dwarf range. Once again, I'll give you the data tomorrow, but it's given a pretty nice view there in the middle of the screen. You can see why it's a spiral of class O, because such spirals have really no distinguishing features. They're more like elliptical galaxies, or we want better flat plates. So it's the branching point away from the ellipticals to the spiral classifications in the Hubble tuning fork diagram. NGC 3138 is another galaxy towards the south in Hydra. Magnitude 15, 1.2 by 0.4 arc minutes, a spiral with a minor bar and a minor core. 349 um, million light years distant at that size. This baby is probably as large, if not larger, than 31, if we can actually see it. Because we are looking pretty far south at a 15th magnitude galaxy. I'll sweep it a few times. We're now about to enter into spring galaxy time, NGC 3377, a galaxy in Leo, magnitude 10.4, 4.3 by 2.6 arc minutes. It is an elliptical galaxy, a mere 30 million light years distant. Um, this one's probably going to be a subdwarf when I calculate the size. And by the way, when I calculate the size, I'm going to give you down to a thousand light years for the diameter. The galaxy is right there. You can see the extensions blowing off to the 11 and 5 o'clock position. It's an elliptical that must be an extreme one given its ellipticity, which means it's probably in the E5 to E7 range. I can quite seriously see the extensions going off to those directions, and I hope you can too. Here's our view of NGC 3370. Seven. Okay, our first Messier of the evening, Messier 105, a galaxy in Leo, magnitude 9.3, largish, 5.3 by 4.8, means pretty much face on. Uh, it's, a, it's not claiming any particular style. It's only 38 million light years distant, so it's not particularly large, probably smaller than our own Milky Way, maybe somewhere in the 60 to 70,000 light year diameter range and here is our view of the galaxy right in the center of the screen it may have a companion up further north that's uh, interesting so here's our view scanned it a little bit Move the camera down so now the uh, luminosity is flat pretty much, but we don't quite see as much of the faint detail when I do that. SEA 105 under galactic dial. Another Messier, Messier 95. Should be close to 96. That'll be the next one. Galaxy in Leo, magnitude 9.7, 7.3 by 4.4 arc minutes, 38 million light years distant. Not a biggie. Probably a super dwarf. Here's our look. I'm not satisfied with the views we're getting tonight. I think the sky must be pretty much swirling uh, the light around or something. 
nothing about it, but you know, I can almost see a ring around Messi and Aguilar at my viewing angle. I'll have to look for it later on, but it does appear to have a ring. The uh, core the, could, either, could either have a bar or an oval core region extending to the 12 and 6 o'clock positions. That ring is ba basically made up of a spiral arm that is being rapidly rotated out gravitationally. There's probably another galaxy nearby that's causing that annular effect by drawing in some of the outer material of the spiral of the galaxy. Here I'm going to flatten out the image a little bit by changing the position of the camera. And you can tell as well as I whether or not this actually helps in presenting detail. Typically, I think it, it, the contrast a little better when I bring the bar right up to it. So there's our view of my El Messier 95. Well, the scope did shift a little bit to go to Messier 96, so it didn't share the field. It's a galaxy in Leo, magnitude 9.3, a little larger, 7.8 by 5.2, and I believe, if my memory serves me well, a little closer at 38 million light years. There's no specification on its type. It's a bit more oblate. Uh, my battery's about to fail. I'm going to take a break, charge it up, and be back out because we have more galaxies in Leo to observe. If not, Carpe Noctum. Well, to recap, it's about 45 minutes later. It takes that long for the battery for this handheld to chart recharge. Back at M95, which we saw earlier, Galaxy and Leo, magnitude 9.7, 7.3 by 4.4 arc minutes, 38 million light years distant, kind of a smallish galaxy. Um, you can see the spiral arms. I've come to the conclusion that the atmospherics tonight are pretty poor, especially with the moon up there. Um, we're getting lots of water vapor in the air, and it's kind of losing contrast. So we're not quite getting the views I got previously, plus the moon is complicating the picture by, by washing the sky with a little bit more luminosity than we might want. So here's our review of Messier 95, and you can see the spiral arms ringing round about the extended uh, bar of the galaxy, which is pretty much a face on the galaxy. Let's go ahead and have a look at Messier 96 as well. And the <clears throat> information regarding Messier 96, galaxy in Leo, magnitude 9.3. Kind of oblate, 7.8 by 5.2 arc minutes, 38 million light years distant. Probably a super dwarf galaxy. I'll give you the values on that tomorrow when I have a chance to calculate them. So here's a view of the galaxy. Slightly oblate. You can see the spiral arms around the outside. Image is a little washed out. Hoping that uh, the stars will start to shape up here in a little bit. We're basically taking a nine second exposures of everything tonight because we're operating at 128 flood. Well, that's getting a little nicer. There's our view, Messier 96. NGC 3384, Galaxy in Leo. Uh, looks like it also has another designation of 3371, magnitude 9.9, 5.4 by 2.7. It's an elliptical of class 7, 33 million light years distant. Not particularly large. We'll get the numbers in the morning, but here's our view of Galaxy. Looks like it's got a bit of a neighborhood there. There's a spiral off to the uh, two o'clock position, finger spiral. It's too bad the sky's all awash with all this atmospheric water tonight. I'm sure we'd start to see some really nice definition in those spiral extensions. And 
as you see, 3384. I'm going to pump the next button and see if we find uh, an adventitious galaxy to look at as well. Another adventitious galaxy, NGC 3388, galaxy in Leo, also known as 3425. So it's redundant, magnitude 13.1. Hey, this one's a straight on 1.1 1 .1 arc minute size galaxy, so that's nice to know. It's a uh, spiral of class O, which means right at the branching point, 299 million light years distant. I give this a chance about being the physically actual size is probably comparable to our own galaxy at about well, 90 to 100 thousand light years across, waiting for the image to begin to uh, stabilize on the screen. You can see the galaxy. I can see a faint core. I can see the core with a bit of a bar, and I can see a ring around it. It's pretty close to the center of the screen, forming a rough triangle with two brightest stars to the 1 and the 5 o'clock or 4.30 positions. Well, I had hoped that the stars would start to uh, present themselves nicely, but that doesn't appear to be happening. By the way, Leo is pretty close to culminating now, within probably about an hour. Another adventitious galaxy, 33 NGC 3399, galaxy in Leo, magnitude 12.8, 1 1.7 by 1 1.7, face on spiral of, of the class O. Um, 305 million light years distant. This one is probably as large, if not slightly larger than the Andromeda galaxy. I just don't like what I'm seeing up there on the screen. Can't believe it's possible that maybe the focuser got messed up and it's not easy to reset focus when you are operating at such slow exposure times and I don't really want to play with it. all these observations after checking the focus at some point. All those little bright stars, by the way, are probably just misfired pixels in the CCD imager. I'm not happy with this. It's possible the focus will run off. Well, I took the opportunity to play with the focuser. I dropped it down to like 416 flood. So we're still on 3399. I'm going to have to compare the view. I'm still seeing some smudges on the screen. NGC 3399, Galaxy Leo, magnitude 12.8, 1.7 by 1.7, class O spiral at 305 million light years. There may be some improvement in the focuser. So it's possible that it just weight or caused a shift, or but it looks pretty much as it did before. Although it's eh, slightly better, perhaps. I am not seeing the galaxy. Oh, I, 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 either that or there's a galaxy group up there. So I'm just going to move on so we get to something a little brighter. NGC 3489, Galaxy and Leo. Uh, magnitude 10.83, 3.6 by 2.2 arc minutes. It's a class spiral with a large bar, still type of an O, with a slight A an extension. I guess that would be 32 million light years. Uh, not a particularly large galaxy, probably a super dwarf. And there's our view. Clearly a galaxy, there's some smudges around it. Well, if it isn't the focuser, it could just be some of the water vapor and atmospheric disturbances making the imaging this evening rather unpleasant. If 
I do get another chance, I will come out, but uh, not sure that's going to happen with the conditions the way they've been recently. So there's our view of galaxy 3489. Now to the feature galaxies of the night. Okay, we're on to a pair of Messiers, Messier 65 and 66, down near the hind quarters of Leo the Lion. Galaxy magnitude 9.3, 9 by 2.3 arc minutes, 35 million light years distant. Uh, this might be a Milky Way sized galaxy given its dimensions and distance. Let's have our look. Ah, clearly. A semi edge on spiral galaxy, Messier 65. We're not getting much definition to it tonight because you can tell by all the smearing going on. So, not the best view, but perhaps the, better, the best galaxy we've seen this evening. Be nice if we could get a sense of a dark lane, any kind of definition in it, but looking at those stars and how they're washing out. There's very little definition in them. I am seeing a bit of dark obscuration nebula off in this position over here where it's being slightly truncated and on the other side there. So there may be an inner ring and an outer spiral that's shooting around the outside of it. Nice large view on a better night with clearer skies and maybe sharper focus and a little less moon wash and a little less atmospheric haze it should be quite a beauty. Look how round and uh, spherical the core of the galaxy is. That's quite uh, impressive. They don't, I rarely ever see them look such so globular-esque in their cores. Anyway, Messier 65 and nearby Messier 66 next on the docket. Okay, Messier 66, not too far from 65, Galaxy and Leo, magnitude 8.9, a little brighter and very edge on, 1 point by 4.1 arc minutes, not as large, 35 million light years distance, maybe a, at best a super dwarf galaxy. And we have our view right there, you can see the spiral arms going off. Off to the three o'clock position. Look a little larger than I expected at four arc minutes on the major dimension. Yeah, that does seem to be a little larger than four arc minutes. Once again, a brilliant core with some extension going off like a bar, extended core region. You can see some nebulosity in it. Certainly a spiral-esque shape to it going off to the three and nine o'clock positions. Yeah, very nice. And on a clear, more transparent, stable night, we would probably start to see some really serious H2 regions, which are hinted at in this image, etc., to all at. Anyway, there's our view of Messier 66. Uh, here's a galaxy I remember from my six inch observing days 20 years ago, NGC 3628, a galaxy in Leo. It's very close, forms like a triangular relationship with 65 and 66. Magnitude 9.5, very extensive, 13 by 0.1 by 3.1 arc minutes. It's a barred spiral of the lesser distinction, 32 million light years distant, giving its size, I would say it may be pretty close to our own galaxy in size, super dwarf or perhaps a sub-average size galaxy. You can see the dark bar off splitting the galaxy in half with the, with the brighter part to the uh, nine o'clock position and the fainter region off to the three, practically vertical. There is hints of um, 
H2 region, Galaxy does shoot quite a ways off in various directions. I can pretty much hints a covering more than two-thirds of the screen, top to bottom. This is uh, quite a fetching view of a galaxy, almost up to NGC 891 standard in terms of its aesthetic appeal, but slightly turned on its side, which doesn't give that really strong edge-on appearance by splitting the galaxy perfectly in half like an 891, but that is a lovely view. And I'm looking forward to calculating its actual size, which I suspect will be somewhere above 75,000 light bits. But we'll have to wait until I run the numbers on it tomorrow. Once again, the beauty, NGC 3628 and Neo. Very close to 50, M56 and 60, 65 and 66. All right, our last Leonine galaxy of the evening and the earliest galaxies of spring are visible in Leo, Leo Minor. NGC 3607 is a galaxy in Leo, magnitude 9.9, 4.6 by 4 arc minutes. It's a spiral of class O, branching point 38 million light years distant, probably a super dwarf. Let's see what we've got on the screen. There we have it. Fairly face on. Oh yeah, I'm just remembering now, there is a galaxy I wanted to pick up. It's later in the evening, it's about 10 o'clock, and maybe it'll be out of the floodlights. Very large dwarf galaxy associated with a local group. But this we're looking at here is NGC 3607. I will try to track, turn down what I believe to be NGC 3109. And that will be our last look. And if we don't see it, this will be our last look. We'll be leaving the evening on NGC 3109, a galaxy in Hydra, a member of our local group of galaxies, magnitude 9.9, .9, very large, 19.7 by 3.4 arc minutes, a mere 3.9 million light years distant, probably not much more than 10,000 light years in uh, diameter its major axis. We're probably not going to see anything up on the screen tonight. This, is going to, this reminds me of Barnard's galaxy in the summertime. Very large, very faint, easily overwhelmed by any luminosity uh, and any lack of transparency. It's also to the deep, like Barnard's, it's to the deep south. So at best, we might actually be seeing something of its core-ish region, but no, I think not. We're uh, probably going to have to let go of NGC 3109. It's nice to know about it. I'll tell you how large it is, however. A fellow member of a local group of galaxies. I believe there's two dozen or so galaxies in our local group. And that's the best we're going to get on this one from a far northerly location. So I'm going to say to you all, Carpe Noctum.